Would that be the camera? Uh, okay. <coughs> Next thing on the agenda is McCorkle Community Center. Uh, Lawrence has given us the last day here. Lawrence, did you want to? Any concerns? The government day, the next one will be Monday, September 10th. And we need to try to get the word out more because there are more people in the community that are just finding out that we do that down there. So what we were thinking, maybe using the electronic sign. I've seen out on 214 at Midway. Maybe about time for the the uh, government day. Maybe have that out there and you know, let people know. And also more in the paper, maybe because there's a lot of neighbors there who just find it out. And uh, we're still uh, the parking lot still needs work done to it. Uh, I talked with Boyd yesterday and. Uh, they're supposed to go over there and work on that front there, remove the, uh, that pipe, the gravel down, move some of the dirt over. He said that they had scheduled to get on that. Okay, great. And uh, the outreach donated five computers and desks, and we're checking with suddenly to verify the cost of the uh, internet. <coughs> Nine. Huh? Nine. Nine. Well, we just used five. And I talked to Diane last night, and she from uh, Outreach up north, Glendale, and she wants the old computers and any electrical TVs, anything that is at the center and no use, they recycle back up there. And Toyota Manufacturing in West Virginia don't need the monitor to be used for presentations, moving, etc which my wife, Sharon Wood, works for them. And that's all I have. Thank you. Well, I reached on good. We gave away the bags, or backpacks, whatever you want to call them. Last year we gave away 24. This year we gave away 95. Uh, would it be possible, after the meeting, to uh, maybe have a little meeting with two of y'all so we can make sure we get everything coordinated and all that? Down to my office, maybe after me. Okay, next thing on the agenda is a healthy initiative. Um, hopefully, we will be starting a new program tomorrow. Uh, we have our employee cookout appreciation day tomorrow at noon, and hopefully, we'll get some groups that will want to start walking. Okay, we just want to keep that. Uh, out there encouraging people. Uh, I did have a contact this week. It's finally, uh, he said, after all this, uh, I don't want to give you a name, but he said, after all this uh, time, he said, I waited near the end when he talked about having a celebration. I finally said, tell myself, I've got to quit smoke. So he finally said, I have, I've been off up two weeks, so we'll see how it works. And I seen one of our good participants that had quit smoking, seen her out smoking yesterday. Oh, no. That was so sad. But she assured me she is quitting again. She just needed that. <laughs> Every time I catch one of my diabetics with a candy bar, they tell me the same thing. <laughs> my last one. Until the next. Anyway, if there's anyone here that hadn't got the message in our volunteer group, whether it be the Crime Watch or you know, the different organizations we have, Parks and Rec and all this, we do have that. Lunch is marked 12, be across the street. We're putting, we started yet or not putting a tent up, but uh, we'll be serving lunch there at 12 until we get everybody gets taken care of. So uh, we've got to basically a, a uh, semi healthy uh, baked chicken rather than fried uh, and uh, salads, veg, you know, veggie type things and fruits and nothing but water to drink. Mm. <laughs> I'm afraid people will be trying to sneak up the courthouse. <laughs> I'm really <laughs> Okay. Uh, this was tabled over from the last meeting. A motion to approve a donation amount of $500 to the Lincoln County Fairs and Festivals for fireworks for the fall festival. So, I see. Motion second. Then all yes. Motion carries. That's not what he asked for. That's what I thought we should. 
Next thing under a new business. I need a motion to approve the bills as submitted for payment. <coughs> I need a motion to approve the appointments done in vacation to Lincoln County Commission by Merle Duke Clark. I'll second that. 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 I'll for the Community Participation Grant Program and give Charles McCann, President, authorization to sign the stated documents. So, I see. And second, and all yes, motion carries. I need a motion to accept the sheriff's settlement for the period of March 7, 2012 through June 30, 2012, as presented by David Vicker, Sheriff. I'll second. Motion and second, all yes, motion carries. I need a motion to appoint Alan C. Holder to the Airport Authority as a representative of the Lincoln County Commission. So, I second. Motion second. Again, all yes. Motion carries. I need a motion to schedule the annual turkey shoot for September the 15th, 2012 at 9 a.m. at the Upper Mud River Shooting Range. Second. Second. Moved and second. All yes. Motion carries. If anybody doesn't know, this is a event that the Commission has sponsored number of years and basically involves shotguns 12, 16, 20, and pistol and deer rifle and sometimes uh, the, the muzzle loader. So uh, basically has a good turnout. The ROTC kids come up and actually run the cards, making sure that they uh, give them the targets and things. <coughs> them. So it's, a, it's one of those things that uh, we thought we'd try when we built the new shooting range. Anyone wants to come, welcome to be there. We provide the ammo for the shotgun, the pistol that do their own. Do y'all have any flyers about that? We were going to have some extra, but I got one on the board, bullet board down here. But uh, that's only one we have so far. I haven't made any copies yet. But you might need a few copies, and I'll put them out. Yeah. In the area. So it's we'll yeah. That, we've got some somewhere. I they haven't got them to us. I need a motion to approve a donation in the amount of $500 to each Lincoln County Crime Watch Group. So moved. Motion second. All yes. Motion carries. I need a motion to approve a donation in the amount of $3,000 to the two food pantries in Lincoln County. This is what we always have done, so it's probably the motion. I'll second it. Motion second. All yes. Motion carries. I need a motion to give the Lincoln County Democratic Executive Committee authorization to use a small courtroom in the Lincoln County Courthouse on August 16, 2012 at 6 p.m. for a meeting. So, I second. Motion second. All yes. Motion carries. I need a motion to appoint Leslie B. Kirkshank as administrator of the estate of Emmett W. Valentine Sr. set bond of $1,000. I need a motion. I'll second that. Motion and second. Again, all yes. Motion carries. I need a motion to reappoint Sharon White to the Lincoln County Board of Health, term being July 1, 2012 through June 3, 2017. So moved. I second. Motion and second. All yes. Motion carries. I need a motion to approve the employment of Brandon Johnson as supervisor of the NEG Storms DOL for the cleanup of the Middle Fork Creek. This is, uh, we talked about probably back some time, uh, part of the Workforce Investment Board, and uh, they basically uh, are providing us some people come out and work, we have to provide the supervisors, but wherever we pay, then we can bill them and get reimbursed. Right. Right. They pay the cleanup, we pay for the supervisor. I'll make the motion. And I'll second. Motion and second. All yes. Motion carries. Okay, next thing on the agenda is public comments. Anyone in the audience would like to speak at this time? Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, uh, I want to thank the commission today. I'm here uh, on behalf of the United Mine Workers. I know you've probably heard of the bankruptcy filing by Patriot Cole. 
we're here today to <coughs> excuse me, try to get the commission to sign off on a letter of support for the employees. I've done been to the Boone County Commission. They signed off on one, and the uh, Democratic Executive Chair signed one. Tracy's got one that uh, we're going to look at tonight to sign. And uh, here's a copy of the letter that we're trying to get signed. Here's some more copies. We have Lisa Rainey here, who is the chairman for the Republican, where she may as well put something. That'd be fine. The more people we can get to sign, the better off the bed. be a long fight. They're going after the retirees' health care. Uh, they're going after the active uh, people that's working. They're going after their health care plus benefits. They're going to try to get uh, you know less money on the hour, uh, take days away that people's accumulated over the years. I myself, I've worked there for 35 years. And uh, this was a setup deal that was started five years ago with Arch Coal and Peabody Coal. Arch formed a company called Magnum, they dumped all their union debt onto Magnum. Peabody formed Patriot Coal. About a year and a half into it, they put those two companies together, which put all the liability on Patriot. There's 22,000 retirees, people that will be affected through this. There's over 102 companies, not counting subsidiaries, that will fall under this lawsuit. They went to New York City and formed two dummy companies so they can file in New York City. They have no business whatsoever other in New York City. All their is in West Virginia and Illinois. Their main office is in St. Louis and offices in Charleston. So we have filed a petition to try to get it moved back to West Virginia. I think those will be heard maybe on the 23rd of this month. Uh, we're having a meeting in Charleston on the 30th, and we're trying to get all the retirees out, uh, any active people. I'm the uh, officer of the local 2286 there at Hobet. We've got about 750 people in our local. About 350 of those are retirees now. Uh, I'm also the chairman of the Boone Lincoln Logan Combat Committee for the mine workers. And, uh, like I say, I come here today to try to get this signed off on. The Boone County Commission, they went ahead and took our letter and put it on their letterhead and then signed off on the bottom of it. Uh, if I can just get this signed, and what we're going to do, we've got people working Mingo, Logan, also getting these signed. We've got other lists here just getting individual people to sign <coughs> off on. We're just trying to get as many signatures as that they can take with them when we end up in court to show their support out in the communities and how hard it's going to hit these communities. Because there's a lot of employees works down there that lives in Lincoln County. Uh, so got some retirees. Yeah, we've got some retirees that's going to be affected in this also, sadly to say. Uh, like I say, I'm a member, been there 35 years, and I was hoping to retire after the first year. But, uh, now, on this, on this, uh, you want to uh, each individual commissioner and signer to how you want to tell Well, them. like I said, here's the way y'all do it how you want to do it. There's the way Boone County died. They put it on their letterhead and then Fix the commission the signed it across the bottom. Okay. I know this is had a, I have a lot of patients that work for Patriot yeah. and work for Patriot and things. And I just, uh, I don't know that anybody, or you guys do because you work there and have to deal with it, but when I talk to people how unsettled they are about this, I mean, they, their whole future that they work for, <clears throat> just all of a sudden they don't have it there in front of them. And it, it, it's uh, not only bad economically for those families and hearts in those areas around there, because I see a lot of people from uh, Boone and Logan County too, but it's also a tremendous stressor just the families. Oh, it I mean, is. You know, they, they're talking about moving out, they're talking about you know, not waiting around to see what happens and things. And, I think it's a, uh, you know, it's a shame. You know, I, I see these people day in and day out that hurt themselves in the minds and don't tell anybody about it because they don't want to lose their job. And then a few years before they're retiring, they can't do the job because they've been hurt so much and, and, and have the effects of the black lung bottom so much. And then 
I don't know, it, there doesn't seem to be any compassion on the part of the employer then. Even though these people have been loyal employees and took lost fingers and broke backs and, and, and developed black lung or lung cancer, and when it comes down to these type things, they don't seem like they have any idea of, of what's right. What's right is not to, you know, kill you guys working in these mines and then just leaving you to up, just say, well, you, you make it from here on out. That's just not, that's just not right. I myself, I, like I said, I've been there 35 years. I've had a disc took out my lower back from work. I've had a rotator cuff surgery repaired. I go take spinal injections, uh, trigger point injections, just so I can continue to work. And then when you get to the age of where you're thinking you're going to get to enjoy life a little bit, then that's when you want to take it all away from. I'll, I'll stand and tell you right now, this will be a hell of a fight. And the mine workers is up to it. Well, I've done been told by Cecil Roberts that if they had to spend every dime at the union, they got to fight them. That's what they want to do. So it's probably going to be a long, drawn out fight if that's what it comes to. If we can't get it moved out of New York, then we're going to New York. Uh, if, uh, probably a lot of us may be in the, get to see us in jail somewhere through before this is over with. But, if that's what happens, uh, I'll spend my retirement years in jail. At least I'm <laughs> That at least I get fed. Uh, I, 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 have, I have one patient that's 57 years old and spent 30 some years working in the mine. He's a roof bolter. He has both his uh, rotator cuffs are torn on both sides. So this man's working up over his head in constant pain and continues to work because he doesn't want to not work. And these are the type of people that we're seeing affected with this. These people that are so loyal and so hard working, and then they wind up in the end getting no, no compensation for it. You know, I, I do black lung evaluations and occupational medicine evaluations, and I see what shape these guys' lungs are in. And then you can't pay them enough for what they do. You really can't. You can't pay them for how to fix the lot of them. Maybe do two things. Uh, I would entertain a motion to uh, provide support as requested uh, in the letter, and one item, and also then a, uh, another would be to have request that we put this on their head and have a vote for signatures, but just go on record as a commission that we support. Uh, yeah, I think we, did, we, we probably would have to have that as an agenda item to sign it. But I mean, I think we're all in support of what we're saying here. Absolutely. So, and I, I'll go ahead and make a motion Just like you're saying there, that, that, that we are in support of you. Then, uh, we have second. All right, we have a motion second. Just to basically a support of the uh, United Mine Workers in this uh, uh, bankruptcy filing for the Patriot Coal. And then we will prepare a letterhead for signatures. Uh, and be available to be signed at the next meeting. Now, where can we send that? I'll give you my address and get it to me. Uh, do you know when the when is your next meeting? Not until September the sixth. Yeah. Uh, late. Well, we're having a meeting August the 30th, and I was trying to get all this put together so I could present it to Cecil will be in town. And uh, I mean, if, if well, well, I mean, we could. I I think. In a emergency situation, we can meet, or we can just add this to the agenda. I think, it, uh, since it's a non-money spending, not an issue. Right. That, uh, that just, just yeah, we're just wanting to show that we have the support of Lincoln County, and uh, you know all the surrounding counties that our employees live in. Uh, that's that's all we're asking them. Uh, so I guess our question is: Do we want to have a special meeting to address this, or do we want to address it today? Well, I I think we can go ahead, go ahead. I mean, I think it's. We're pretty you know, unanimous in a decision about it already, and I don't think if there would come a problem, someone would see a procedural problem with this, we'll just go ahead and put the motion on the, on the, on the next meeting and go ahead. But I think we can, I don't see any problem with going ahead and sign the resolution yeah. in the meantime because you, you don't pay for that appointment. We, we've done things similar to this before and when we're dealing with the timetable. We don't, we don't like to we don't like to move on things that we don't have on the agenda. But we will if it, if there's a timetable involved where it needs to be done. Yeah, if, if there was any way I could have, I would have been here sooner. But you know, this is all happening, and it's 
the faster they can shove it down our throat, you know, the better it is for them. And that's why we're trying to get, I guess what you say, get our ducks in a row so we can. Uh, okay, tell Jim what you want to do. We'll get All right, it's Rick Ryan, 24, Fire Tracks Trail, TRAX, SOD. 25564. <clears throat> I truly appreciate it. Thank you. All right. Appreciate it. And you know, if something else comes up as you move into it, feel free to come back and, or let us know how we might help. I, I appreciate that. <clears throat> She was next while going on. No I just had a couple of things, hopefully. Um, I just wanted to let everybody know that um, our, the Day Report Garden has done uh, pretty good this year, and so they've been seeing a lot of produce come out of that. They're, they're having a hard time finding places for it to go, which shocks me. <laughs> um, they, they've been giving some of it to the, the um, pantry out here in Hamlin. Um, and they've asked around to different places to see if anybody would have, say, a church group or something like that that would want to come uh, receive that free produce. Uh, the idea being that it would go to um, a church group that would distribute that to um, elderly individuals, non-ambulatory people who, who can't get out and garden but would like the benefit of fresh uh, produce items. So I thought maybe the best idea might be to put the word out and let people come to us with phone numbers or contact information. Um, it, it just goes against everything, I think, to let stuff like that go to waste. And, and this year's been one of the best years that they've had. And they've got watermelon and green beans, and we've managed to keep the deer out of it. So, uh, and they've done a really good job with it. They've really taken that on. Chad Chandler uh, has really done a, a great job with, with doing that. And um, I don't believe they put any pesticides on any of it, so it's organic. So even better. Um, but I just wanted to put that out so if anybody has any contacts that they'd like to leave with me as far as coming after that. Have you approached um, the school system since they might not have one school that they'd like to experiment with? Well, <laughs> there's always the, the issue with the, the menus there and, and having the menus designed and all that. I mean, I'd love to see it go there. I'd love to see us supply all of the food to the school out of the county. Um, bigger project than probably what I can take on, but... Um, we could do that. I don't know if, you know, how, Diane Miller's not with the no, food Angie service Angie. down there, so I'm not sure who, I and guess Angie I would Preacher. contact her. Yeah, um, but for the short term right now, I mean, they still have produce that's coming on in that garden. And so, you know, even today, if I've got contact information that I could pass to them, they go down, they pick it, they bring it back out here to the Day Report Center uh, building, and anybody that wants to come by there and pick that up, you know, we, we would just like for people to, to understand that we'd like it to go to elderly uh, in church groups or any other kind of a group. You know, if you know anybody that has any other kind of group that could access people to, to hand that out, um, we'd certainly like to see that go and, and be given to people that can use it. So you're talking about just basically some, any nonprofit group that taking care of? Anybody who can get it to somebody who who needs it would like to have it and could benefit from it. Well, we could all benefit from it, but you know, uh, generally, it's people who would not be able otherwise to get their own locally grown fresh produce by growing it themselves. Um, ideally, elderly and people with small children who may not uh, have the opportunity in their land space. So they need to check with you or check with Chad. They can call me. They can call Chad. Um, any either one of us, Jerry Swanson. I mean, he could pass that information as well on to uh, Chad. Um, but but for the most part, they're going to have to come to the Day Report Center to pick it up. That's where it's going to end up. And they pick that stuff several they'll times a week. Huh? Well, probably not. But uh, they'll have it in bags and have it ready to go to whoever would like to have it. So um, we really just encourage. I don't want it to go to waste. What about like your? Uh, senior citizens 
like the place up there next to Furlsburg. Yeah. Uh, LCOC. 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 Any phone numbers you have, any contact names you have of people that you think would be willing to come pick that up if they got a phone call today and said, hey, we've got 40 pounds of green beans we just picked this morning. Can you come after them? Yes, we'll be there. Because they've picked over, you know, five, six hundred pounds of tomatoes. The green beans did very well. Last year they got eaten to the ground by the deer, but we fixed the fence. So they have a lot of green beans, watermelons, corn, potatoes, uh, just all kinds of things that, that they've been successful in, in growing this year. And I just, I refuse to let that go to waste. I'm glad um, you're trying to save it. Right, there's no reason for that. And you know, I do get calls from time to time from uh, local people who grow gardens just because they've always grown gardens and they have extra that just sits on the vine and goes to waste. And so, you know, I always am trying to find places to send that. Uh, we shouldn't have any of that sitting out going to waste anywhere. Um, get that picked and get it out to people who can use it. Even, even obese kids can use that. Absolutely <laughs> obese children can use that. Talk I about the nutrient rich foods instead of uh, calorie empty foods. Um, I've been working with a, a boy, or a, a man I should say, I say boy because he sounds so young on the phone, uh, Brandon Enochs. He went to school here in the county, I'm not sure exactly where, um, I'm thinking Griffithsville area maybe. But he's a certified engineer now, and he's, he's agreed to take on what we have um, in the 4-H program called the STEM program, and that's an acronym for Science, Technology, Engineering, and Math, and it's very focused on those kinds of activities for 4-H youth. Uh, you know, again, people have the idea that 4-H is just for agriculture and going to the county fair and all that kind of thing, and that is still a part of what we do, but, you know, we also understand that there needs to be a focus on those kinds of activities with a lot of hands-on learn by doing kind of things and um, he's agreed to try and work on that program with me here in Lincoln he's really excited about taking that on so I, I think we would really benefit tremendously from a program like that um, I lost some robots and equipment that I could have gotten my hands on that we could have kept had we had people that I could have gone to at the time to get them quickly on board and get us a robot team together. And it was uh, programming that they used with the Mars Rover program, not this current one, but the one that just passed. It, it was software that came straight from NASA, straight from the uh, programmers that used it up in the upper part of the state. So it would have been a good hands-on opportunity for kids that could have competed uh, to make those robots work. So um, it really... I get very disappointed when opportunities like that pass, but you know, I reach out and try to grab one, three will go by, but we'll keep grabbing after more of those. But I'd really like to see um, uh, some people come out if they're interested in something like that to uh, help us get kids involved. And I'd like to see us have a, a robotics uh, team in the county if we could pull that together, and especially with the, uh, the critical skills education that would be involved in, in this kind of an activity. And it'd be fun. It would firstly be fun. <laughs> Secondarily, there would be a lot of good educational opportunities there. Um, you know, in the past, we've had issues with our meetings too. You know, the 4-H meetings is just everybody's so far apart. You know, it seems like 14 Mile Mountain is just so hard to get over, <laughs> and uh, you know, the guy in Dot River just seems impossible to cross. You know, either way, and I mean either way. So, um, and, and we've come up with a, a, a program that we've been using. Uh, called go to meeting and I do have access to use that program we have uh, five um, co uh, contracts that the university's purchased so I can call at any time to the IT and ask them for a um, selected time period with that and we can get people on either side if you can't make it to a meeting if you gotta cook your dinner if you've got a, a computer or a tablet or something with a camera on it that will accept that program we can have you in our meetings and you can still cook your dinner or take care of your sick children or whatever but still be a part of our meetings I really want to try and include as many people as we can and that is certainly one way that that we can do that so um, if you think you can't attend a meeting that's not a problem I can fix that and we can make sure that people get the chance to uh, be involved in our 4-H program um, and, and any other programming for that matter that Extension Service has with David Roberts and his Families and Health Programming, Dining with Diabetes. Um, you know, we both have access to those um, go to meeting applications and they work very well. It's actually the high end digital 
version of that go to meeting program. So uh, it'll be just like we're all in the same room together, and, but less travel time. So and that's that's always important. Um, and having said that, the leaders, 4-H Leaders Association, will be having a meeting on October the 8th in person at the extension office out here across from 7-Eleven at 6 o'clock. Now the benefit of showing up in person is they generally will get food to eat for dinner. <laughs> so uh, if it looks like you're on camera and you have something better, we may come to your house. But, uh, but certainly, you know, anybody who would want to participate in that meeting in person can come there. If not, and you'd still like to participate, but something else, you know, you've got to be somewhere else in the county for whatever reason. Uh, shortly before that, by all means, let me know about a half an hour ahead of time, and I can send you an email with uh, a link. You click the link, and it, it does for you what you need it to do.